Hi, this is Ryan Boyles from the WebSphere Smash development team. I want to talk to you about using WebSphere Smash in the Amazon Cloud today. I've also got another developer from our team, Mandar Jog. And we're going to show you how to get started basically from the IBM website and drill down to the, the resource information and the, the guides that we have for setting up an, a developer AMI in the Elastic Compute Cloud. Uh, on Amazon and we'll show you some some web guides to start with and then Mandar is going to drive through the uh, web for, uh, Amazon Web Services uh, console and show you how to navigate to the AMI image for Smash. So start out by going to your web browser and really just typing in ibm.com slash cloud and this is going to take you to our, our banner cloud computing page. Uh, um, that you've probably seen in the press and, and talked about in, in various places. Um, so this is talking about public and private clouds. Um, what we're going to talk about today is uh, the Amazon EC2 or Elastic Com Compute Cloud. You'll see in the middle of the page here you've got a link and you basically navigate to the cloud computing uh, space on DeveloperWorks and this talks all about uh, different uh, events and blogs and interviews uh, about this uh, effort with uh, Amazon and what we're going to show you today is how to uh, set up WebSphere Smash. So if you click on the uh, middle tab it takes you to the different sorts of uh, offerings we have from IBM software and you'll see uh, information management Lotus and on the right here uh, WebSphere and so the uh, the first portlet here you have uh, the WebSphere Smash resource guide. You can navigate to this essentially to see um, a whole slew of links, um, resource pages, uh, solution catalog, uh, FAQs for frequently asked questions. And you also have um, a, a nice PDF to walk through instructions on using uh, Smash uh, AMIs in the EC2 infrastructure. Uh, hi, this is Mandar Jog from the WebSphere Smash development team. You can log on to, to this console. So uh, I need to buy, uh, I need to access the AMI rather. So I go to the AMI's page, um, I click, I search for Smash in the box here, and then I select the AMI. Now I say, okay, I need to launch this AMI. Um, it takes a little bit of time. Number of instances, one. We select uh, a key pair and it needs some advanced uh, data. So the user data that, that it needs is username, equals let's say my user and then we give it a password <clears throat> now this is the username and password that will be used to access the the smash app builder and now I do a launch Now, if I go back to instances, I should see that one of the instances is starting. So now we see that the, the AMI has been launched. We click on it to look at the details. The important details are the public DNS name, which we'll use to access it, and the zone which is US East 1B. Now we'll need that here when we, when we create the elastic block storage for it so that data can be persisted. So we create a new volume, one gigabyte US East 1B and no snapshot, just do a create. Um, this doesn't take very long to create and it is available right away. Next thing we do is we click on that volume and we attach it, attach the volume 
to the instance that we started, which is this i4fc instance. So we go back here, we do attach volume. to i4 fc9 and the device that you have attached it as is dev slash sdh so i click on attach now shortly it should attach it and right away it, it has been attached so now our instance is launched the public dns name is available here now what we need to do is we need to make sure that port 80 HTTP and port 443 HTTPS are uh, accessible from outside. So the way to do, do that is you go to the security groups and then you click on the default group and then go down. Uh, this is just, uh, these are just firewall rules that, that we set up. Now you go here connection methods, choose HTTP, say add it's added and similarly you go down choose HTTPS save and that's it now we go back to the instances click on that and we pick up the public DNS name from here to access the website now, first time you'll get this uh, security uh, exception because uh, we are using a self-signed certificate and you just need to confirm that that exception and off you go. Um, it's going to ask you to accept a license and this is the username and password that we provided when we launched the AMI. So the password is secret and I do accept license. Now, um, as we can see, the license has been accepted. It gives you a message saying successfully mounted SDH1 at home smash apps for storing smash applications. Uh, if you remember, dev slash SDH was the, the place where we attach the elastic block storage device and now we can proceed to the app builder so I click on the app builder and it will load so there is the app builder and now we can create our first application which is created in that directory and that directory is actually on the elastic block storage so even if this instance of a might dies the applications that you create are, are safe so let's just name it app one stable create and and we have our app All right, so that's how that's how easily you can launch and and a smash AMI and start using App Builder. All right, thank you, Mandar. So now, if you uh, if you're here and uh, you see the uh, quick links across the bottom of the App Builder, you can navigate to different spots in the Project Zero community website um, to look at samples, documentation, uh, or participate on our forums. So I'm going to navigate out to those. You can also just go directly in your web browser. Start out from there by typing in projectzero.org in your web browser. And so that'll take you to our community site. And um, you'll be able to find documentation here. If you click on the Where Do You Find Us, uh, we've got some blog posts uh, about the Web2.0 Expo um, that where we're going to be demoing Smash in the EC2 cloud. The IBM booth is 701. Um, hope to see you there. Thanks for listening, everyone.